Okay, um, hey there YouTube. I'm going to show you guys how to make a motion detecting light sensitive relay. So you could use it as like a, a night light or something. Um, it's basically how to drive a relay but only in the dark. So I made you guys a circuit diagram and I actually have three versions of it. Um, and this is the first version. I have a photodiode version, that's this one. I have a solar panel version and a LDR version. So, okay, let me get you a close-up here so you can see it. So, uh, what's happening here is this is your PIR module, and this is connected into power over here. And so that is this, and you can get these for about two bucks on eBay. That's passive infrared. So what it does is when it detects um, uh, a change in ambient temperature, it outputs a signal wire, or a signal. So you use that to activate a transistor over here, which then drives your relay. Now for my relay, I'm using a relay module, and I would recommend the module, which is like a buck on eBay, because it's got like an a optocoupler and, I don't know, probably snubber circuitry. It, it's pretty dummy proof. Um, uh, relays are an inductive load, which means if you're not snubbing them correctly, um, you'll create a voltage spike and blow out your transistors. Uh, and so this is the non-module version. So that diode there acts as a snubber to burn up the voltage spike. So um, anyway, this is this. So if you do have a module, don't worry about the diode. Uh, and let's see here. Oh, and then... Um, how it detects light is a photodiode, which is this. It looks like an LED, but it's actually kind of the exact opposite. Uh, when light is hitting it, um, it becomes conductive and allows electricity to pass through it. So it just kind of dumps it into ground. So it shorts out this area. So it's unable to turn on the transistor. So the module actually runs the entire time, the PIR module. It's just that um, it's only getting ignored during the daylight hours. And the reason I don't turn it off is because it's got about a 30 second boot up time, during which time uh, it outputs a signal on and off several times, which is kind of annoying. And like, let's say you were doing this for like a porch light, you don't want your you know, porch light spazzing out every time somebody with their high beams on drives past. So. I just leave it permanently running 24 hours a day, even during daylight, and then it's um, just not being ignored at night, because the photodiode turns off. Uh, okay, let's build this thing. So this is my power source. This is um, it's a USB power supply. Uh, I got it for like a buck and a half on eBay. A USB is 5 volt. So there's that. It's connected into the power rails here. And I've already got sort of a little circuit set up for the relay, so you can see when it's working. Just, it's just driving a little red LED here. And this is completely isolated electrically from the other one. That's one of the benefits of a relay. And you can drive whatever you want with this. House lighting, AC power, DC, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so let's plug it in. So I've got, uh, let's see, gray is power, purple is ground. This is currently turned off, so there's that. Worry about the signal later. Let me take this, plug it in. This one is power is orange, green is ground. Plug that in over here. Power and ground, there we go. Okay. Then I need an NPN. And these are 2N2222s, two 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 but really any NPN transistor will work fine. So just plug that in there somewhere. And make sure it's facing away from me so that it goes uh, collector base emitter in that order. So the signal from the relay module goes into the collector. And then the emitter goes to ground. There we go. And let me plug my PIR signal in here somewhere, row 40. And then I'm going to take this 10K resistor here. 
and connect that in between the two. So it's going to go from the base of the transistor to the signal wire from the PIR module. Okay, so that is in there. Okay, so now that will run regardless of lighting conditions. So then you take your uh, photodiode and you just connect that in from ground to uh, the signal row. And it looks like I have this thing um, uh, put in backwards. I don't. It's designed to conduct in reverse bias. It's sort of like a, a Zener diode, I guess. Um, so you want the long leg connected into the ground and the short leg connected into next to your signal there. And okay, that is that. Let's turn it on. And it's going to take about 30 seconds to boot up. Now, one of the downsides with the photodiode is it's not that good at detecting light, so it's not really bright enough in here. So I'm just going to use this to simulate sunlight. So put that right on there, and that should be bright enough to turn it off. So it's booting up, and then probably about good. So I'm going to wiggle my fingers or move my hand in front of the PIR module here so that uh, it can detect my motion, so that it comes on. And when it does, the, uh, the relay will activate this light bulb. So that's how you know it's working. So right now, because light is on this, it's being ignored. But when I take the light away, now I can activate it. If I hold still, it turns off. And I move, and it comes on. See how that works? And then when I reintroduce light onto the photodiode, it doesn't detect my movement anymore. Technically, it still does. It's just being ignored because the signal is being shorted to ground. So it's ignoring my movement. And that is that circuit there. And I will uh, turn that back off. I'll upload um, a copy of this to like Imager so you can print it out. But uh, I don't know how far in the future you're going to be watching this video could be that Imager no longer exists by the time you see this. So let me just give you a close-up here so that you can uh, still pause the video and print it out if you need to. Sort of like future-proofing. Oh, this potentiometer, by the way, I didn't do that, but that's for tuning. You can make it less sensitive to light using that. And it's already less sensitive than I'd like, so I didn't put that in there. Uh, but that's that one. Okay, so then we have the solar panel version, which is similar, and it's the same basic concept. Let me take out my photodiode. Uh, what you do is um, you're still grounding out the signal so that it never reaches this first transistor, only this time you're doing so with another transistor, just another 2N2222. Two 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 two. So that one is going to go on the... Um, the uh, collector leg is attached to the signal, and then the ground leg, or the uh, emitter leg rather, goes to ground. Green, there we go, it's connected, and then the uh, signal actually goes directly to a solar panel. What I do with my solar panel? Just had it, where to put it? Oh, there it is, sideways. Okay, and that's this guy, and this is 5 volt, 40 milliamps. Now, I'm going to connect it without a resistor because the most this can put out is 40 milliamps, which is, you know, within tolerance for my transistor because this thing's not a battery. You don't really have to worry about short-circuiting. Now, it's not quite bright enough in here to activate it. You're going to need to get at least... Um, one volt out of your solar panel, and I'm only getting like half of that because it's, it's kind of dim in here. I've got brighter lights, but um, when I turned it on, it kind of saturated the video. So I'm just going to use this guy to kind of simulate uh, daylight. Uh, okay, so there we go. And that is all hooked up. Let's do it. Turn that back on there. And you see how it'll kind of kick on and off a few times as it boots up? Um... And there it goes again. I'm, it's not detecting motion, it's just spazzing out. It's kind of annoying. Alright. Should be good. 
Okay, so, all right, senses my movement and kicks that on. And then when I shine a light onto this solar panel here, it will ignore the signal being outputted from my PIR. So we'll just shine that right on there. And there you go. Now it's ignoring me. Because this solar panel is now providing enough energy to activate the transistor there. And like I said, it takes about one volt. The amperage doesn't matter so much. These don't take much amperage at all to activate. But it needs at least one volt in order to turn on. So just make sure your panel's big enough to do one volt. So as long as there's light there, this won't activate. And when I pull it away, it does. That's how that works there. And light goes on and it ignores it. So that's that one. So turn that back off. Uh, okay, now the, oh, let me give you the close up on this real quick. So you can print that out if you need to. There we go. Oh, the ground side of the solar panel just goes into the ground of your circuit. And let's see here. Oh, the next one. Okay, that's right. Now this is the LDR version, aka a photoresistor, and this is the official way to do business. Um, this is like, like if you bought a nightlight in a store, this is what will be in the guts of that machine. Uh, this is the way the professional engineers do it. Um, and it works pretty well, and photoresistors are really cheap. Uh, it's just a little bit more complicated. Uh, but it does work, and it works pretty well, so let me show you how to do that. And what you do here is you set it up, um, it's got to be these three, or two in order, and then you connect into the middle of it. And this forms what they call a voltage divider, and it actually causes the voltage to drop, not the amperage, the voltage, to drop enough to turn off this transistor. Because if you can actually hook it up in such a way that um, uh, it becomes bright enough to turn on via amperage in the day and then dim enough at night because LDRs uh, decrease in resistance as light increases. Um, but the problem with that is transistors can kind of turn like halfway on so then your your relay is just sort of halfway closed and it sort of buzzes and you don't want that. Your light would be flickering and be a mess. So uh, by doing it as a voltage divider you're actually turning it off with voltage. So when light is on it, it's less than one volt, so it can't come on. And in the darkness, it becomes more than one volt, so it can come on. So let me take out my solar panel. Don't need that. Um, okay, so I've got my transistor. Transistor remains pretty much the same as before. So, alright, so. There it is, okay. So this goes from hot leg just to some random point here. There we go. And this is a 10K potentiometer. So I'm going to hook that up so that the first pin is connected to my... Uh, LDR photoresistor. LDR and photoresistor are the same thing. It's just two names for the same component. And then this goes from in between the two, so it's on the same row as both pin one of my potentiometer and one leg of my photoresistor. So let me shove that down in there. There we go. And then that goes to the base leg on the second transistor. Put that in there. And there we go. Okay. So that is hooked up there. And then I need a ground for my potentiometer. So the second pin on my potentiometer there goes to ground. And we're good. Okay, so that should be everything. And this might actually be able to detect ambient lighting, because you can tune it using this potentiometer. That's what it's there for. Otherwise, you could just use a regular resistor. 
Okay, so it's currently not bright enough in here to short it out, otherwise you wouldn't be seeing that LED come on. So let me see if I can tune it so that it doesn't do that. It takes a few seconds to boot up. Uh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so when there's light, it's ignoring it, and when you cover it with my finger to simulate darkness here, it works. And um, this one's actually sensitive enough that I don't need my little daylight simulator here. So this one's actually just picking up my normal ceiling lighting. And like I said, you can tune it to adjust its sensitivity to light using the potentiometer. So when it, my finger's on it, it simulates darkness, only comes on at night. When I pull it away, it sees the light, and it will now ignore the PIR. And you can actually use it like a button. See how that works? Um, oh, and another interesting thing is, let me turn this off for a second. Uh, if you were to reverse the position of the LDR in the potentiometer, you can make it so that it only comes on during the day and won't come on at night. So it's like the exact opposite, which is kind of cool. You just swap the two, and it's still the, the transistor is still connected to the middle. So you might find that useful. Now let me give you a close-up on this one. And there you go. And that pretty much completes the tutorial. Um, good luck to you.